Well, folks, the patriarchy strikes again. The Biden administration moves to essentially erase Title IX in favor of trans athletes. Because essentially, they are saying that males have a right to compete in female sports. You already know what it is. It's your boy, Lay Back, with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, TikTok, you up to bat. Bow. It's your boy Lay back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Elevate more in 2024. Elevate more in 2024. If that's something that you want, put that in the comments. Elevate more in 2024. Well, we back with another TikTok reaction, man. Hey, like I said also in the comments, drop what other type of conspiracy theory videos y'all want me to check out, but it's some new stuff that just dropped out here in America. Title Nine, and then some other stuff we gonna get into on the video, man. So I'm always eager to see what you guys say in the comments. I'm always eager to read those comments, and I go through a lot of them, almost 90% of them. But you make it to the end of this one, you a real one, for real. So Fire Squad, what's popping? Let's get it. I made a video a couple of times about how stupid and misogynistic and dystopian this is. And then I remembered that I'm totally banned and suppressed on this app because the trans mafia is so powerful. It's Whoa. canceled thousands of women. Trans mafia? And Never heard of it. I was going to explain what a dystopia this is, but no one's going to see my video. Look at what's happening in other countries. I am no longer voting Democrat. I am no longer a fan of AOC after her stupid pathetic arguments to support this shit this is misogynistic i feel really bad for all the girls growing up in blue states um be very very careful you're gonna lose your stature you're no longer gonna win your medals mm. they didn't put sports into it which is good not because it's political but because it's so fucking obvious the whole world is watching American men beat up American women as if it's a sport because it is a sport now mm. See that has now become the sport It amazes me how how naive and Uneducated so many people are Anyway, just like in the UK now you're gonna be calling your grapist a she and if you don't call her a she, she's gonna sue you for misgendering and it's gonna be a hate incident. Mm. Are you guys are you guys watching what's happening in other countries? Are you guys watching what's happening only in the past year? This is more dystopian than the abortion ban. It is legitimately and this is not for LGBTQ kids, this is for trans women, period. This is opening the door. This is mixing sex and gender. This is pretending we don't know the difference between sex and gender. This is opening the door to a lot of dystopian shit. I am not voting for this old man. I am not voting Democrat. I don't even know if I am voting. I'm just going to write. Biden inserts gender identity into Title IX, adding biological males to women's rights laws. So basically, you know, it ain't just about male and female. It's like, if you identify as this, then that's what you are. It's just based on how you identify. That's what that means. Like my next dystopian novel. No, actually, I already wrote this shit. She mad. Yeah. Hi everyone, so something very interesting is going to happen this November, and I think we all need to pay attention to it. Ever since I came to America 21 years ago, Democrats have constantly claimed to be the party of women's rights and have mm. claimed that Republicans are fighting a war on women. However, every time I've engaged a Democrat on what women's rights entails, it boils down to a right for women to kill their unborn children. And for some of them, throughout all nine months of pregnancy, wow. that is what Democrats understand as preserving women's rights. Because deep down they know and understand that this act is morally wrong. They go through mental gymnastics, trying to justify the act by claiming that the child in their womb 
it's not really an offspring, but a clump of cells relegated to the level of a parasite. Whoa. Now, these same Democrats are going to go to the polls in November to vote for a candidate they believe will preserve their right to continue perpetrating this human sacrifice. Ooh. Here's the kicker. In voting to preserve abortion rights, Democrats will be doing another thing, which I believe is even more detrimental to women. They will basically be erasing what it means. Listen, man, I need, it's a couple of videos that we done did so far on TikTok, man. Also, I got a playlist. You can go check it out and binge watch those pl playlists. It was another video when I was like, yo, women, I need to hear what y'all, your opinion on this. This is another video where I need the women to, for, and men too, you know what I'm saying? What are y'all thoughts on these things, man? Women, I need y'all front and center though. You know what I'm saying? Needs to be a woman. Today, the education department released a final rule that basically turns Title IX on its head. So while the Democrats are claiming to be protecting women's rights, they will simultaneously be taking away protections enacted decades ago to protect women physically, to protect their opportunities, to protect mm. their scholarships, to ensure they're safe in their private spaces. Democrats will be undoing all that progress while at the same time telling women they can kill their unborn children. At the polls this November, you will have single issue Democrats voting in favor of abortion with their presidential vote while simultaneously perpetrating the complete dismantling of what it means to be a woman. Mm. I've never been a single issue voter, but as a father of two daughters, today, the Democrats have made me a single issue voter because those who truly care about our girls, those who truly care about the safety, opportunities, and success of our girls should understand that you cannot protect women's rights while telling them to kill their children and then taking away from them the very essence of what it means to be a woman. Mm. Where are the women that benefited from Title IX? Well spoken. Helping us out in athletics, uh, education, any of that other type of thing that Title IX did. I benefited from it. By the time I would gotten to college in 1975, the Title IX, there were sports for us to play. So I play collegiate sports. Now, guys think they're a girl and they can go into the locker rooms, K to 12, now, even through college. Biden says now he's done something with the education department where if you don't comply with that and let these guys come into your daughter's locker room, he's going to take their federal funding away. High school, college. This is absolutely wrong. It's immoral. Where mm. are you women? Speak out. Hey, what's up, guys? Pastor Zach. Wonderful Friday. Just got done working out. I was just sitting here reading this news about Biden trying to meet, change what Title IX means and sex and gender and all this stuff. And I just want to remind you of this reality. Our sons and daughters are going to fight battles that we were too lazy to Ooh. fight. People wouldn't stand up for a real woman. Ooh. People wouldn't stand up for a real marriage. People wouldn't stand up for oh. real truth against abortion. Hold on, man. Hold on. What a button that. That was too lazy to fight. Come on, man. And now our sons and daughters are going to fight fights that we were too lazy and empathetic and apathetic to fight. Mm. Our daughters and our sons deserve to be protected. Our children That's a fact. deserve to be protected. Our marriages deserve to be protected. Stand up for truth. Quit being cowards. Speak up now if you are a guy who is a current college student or the parent of a guy currently in college you need to watch this entire TikTok because the federal government just made it insanely easy for you or your son to have his life ruined by a mere accusation of wrongdoing 
Today, Joe Biden's Department of Education, which is led by this guy, Miguel Cardona, completely overhauled Title IX. If you don't know what Title IX is, it's a law from 1972 that prohibits sex-based discrimination at any school that receives federal funding. One of the areas of Title IX that was completely overhauled is how universities deal with accusations of SA. To make a long story short, boys, you need to be careful out there. A, because the biggest lie that you've ever been told in your life is that it's actually fun to sleep with a random chick that you met at a party. And B, because under these new regulations, you are essentially now guilty until proven innocent. Now, I want to preface this by saying that, of course, not all accusations of SA are false. And when women come forward, they need to be taken seriously. But last time I checked, we still live in America. And just because you are accused of something does not mean you are guilty of it. The standards for how SA is handled at universities were originally overhauled by the Obama administration. They created what is known as the single investigator model. The guidelines became that when a woman accuses a guy of SA, a single college administrator now determines the outcome of the case. AKA, this random college administrator now can play judge, jury, and execution. Naturally, this led to several high-profile instances of men being kicked out of their colleges and having their lives ruined due to a false accusation. I was also a first-hand witness to this. When I was a freshman at Sacred Heart University, a girl named Nikki Yovino accused two guys on the football team of graping her. But it later turned out that she made the entire thing up. She ended wow. up going to jail for a year for this and received three years of probation after that. And even though that may seem like some semblance of justice, the damage to these two guys was already done. They lost mm. their scholarships, they were forced to leave the school, and they never played football again. Now, when Trump came into office, his Department of Education under Betsy DeVos completely reversed the Obama-era guidelines. The guidelines that they put in place gave people who were accused of SA the right to a live hearing where they could cross-examine their accusers. Mm. AKA, they actually got some sort of a fair trial before a college administrator decided if they were guilty or innocent. But now, under Biden and Cardona, the kangaroo courts are back. And not only are they back, their new regulations go even further than that. Under these new rules, schools are now required to use the preponderance of evidence standard. What this means that if just 51% of the evidence in a case points to their guilt, they're automatically guilty. Those accused Ooh. are no longer entitled to a guaranteed hearing to present wow. their side of the story. And not only that, schools are no longer required to provide accused students the full evidence that is being presented against them. So you're not wow. allowed to present your side of the story. You're not wow. allowed full access to the evidence being presented against you. And wow. one person at your college will decide if you're innocent or guilty. That is what will happen if you are accused of doing something wrong by a woman. This is not a joke, fellas. It's serious shit that could lead to your life being ruined. With all mm. that being said, there's a very simple thing that can lead to this never happening to you. Stop banging random broads that you meet at parties. It may seem fun for the first 10 minutes or so, but then you eventually realize that you're in bed with a stranger, and it kind of sucks. You know what's a lot more fun? Waking up next to somebody that you have a genuine connection with. Taking somebody on a date, making them your girlfriend. Knowing that you're already going home from the party with somebody who you can trust. That's a lot more fun. And we'll guarantee your safety from the Biden kangaroo courts. Boy, that's craziness. Today, the Biden administration dropped their most anticipated rewrite of Title IX. This new rewrite is going to affect women and girls substantially. In the rewrite, they stated that sex is now equivalent to gender identity. What this means is men can take academic and athletic scholarships from women. Men can have full access to women's bathrooms and locker rooms. Men can be housed in women's dorms. And worst of all, students and faculty members alike are going to be forced to use preferred pronouns. Specifically, it is sexual harassment if you do not use the preferred pronouns for an wow. individual. This rewrite undermines all the original efforts of Title IX. It is more important now than ever for us women and girls to speak up against this unlawful rewrite of Title IX. And to the Biden administration, thanks for showing us that you do not stand with women and girls and do not care about all the hard work we've done to fight for our rights. Mm. This stuff is wild. Good morning, friends. I woke up to the sad news this morning that the Biden administration has gone ahead and completely rewrote Title IX. I don't know why I thought that they would potentially stand for women and girls, but they are not. As a Division I athlete and someone who received a full scholarship for school and benefited all the amazing things that Title IX brings, I am completely heartbroken. I am so sad for little girls. I am so sad 
for women. I am shattered this morning, but once I compose myself, I realize that we just need to fight harder mm. and we need to be louder and we need to be stronger because here are the, here's the thing. My little girls, they're not going to use pronouns. They are not going to speak lies. They are going Ooh, to speak wee. the truth. My little girls, I'm not going to let a boy or a man take their spots in sports and not be able to benefit the amazing things that sports bring to young girls and women. And I am for sure not going to let them be changing in a bathroom with a male, a man. No, I'm not going to do that. So I am not going to abide by these rules. We are going to fight back and we are going to win this because women have come way too far to be pushed back and to be erased. And like I've said before, in the name of inclusivity, we are excluding women from our own category. We are excluding mm. girls. We are going to hurt girls for generations to come. So mama bears, parents, we need to stand up. We need to say no to this. We need to talk about this. We need to fight for our girls. I say no to this, no to the Biden administration. You will not be erasing girls. You will not be taking over our spaces. No. Breaking today, a first of its kind lawsuit to protect fairness in women's sports. 16 current and former female student athletes allege that the NCAA's transgender policy is a violation of Title IX that reduces female competitive opportunities and deprives women of their constitutional right to bodily privacy in locker rooms. At the center of the lawsuit is trans athlete Leah Thomas, who results in the 2022 NCAA Swim Championships directly impacted my two guests. Riley Gaines is a former University of Kentucky swimmer and host of the Gaines for Girls podcast on OutKick. And Rika George swam for Virginia Tech and is now the director of operations for the school swim and dive team. Both are part of today's filing. Um, ladies, great to have both mm. of you with us. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so, so, Riley, let me start with you. What is the goal of this lawsuit? And if you win, who would be impacted? Well, uh, thank you very much for having us on. Uh, the NCAA's most basic job is to protect the fairness and safety of competition in collegiate sport. Uh, but instead, what Reka and I face and what countless other female athletes continue to face at the hands of the NCAA is discrimination against us on the basis of our sex, uh, which is, of course, everything that Title IX was passed to, to prevent from happening. Um, so the NCAA is failing on their most basic duties to provide fair, equal, and safe competition, not just for women, but really for everyone. Uh, and who this would impact, what we are hoping for out of this lawsuit is one, accountability, two, responsibility, and three, for the NCAA to implement Title IX by its original intent. Um, so it would impact every athlete um, who competes at the collegiate level and, of course, future athletes who hope to compete at the collegiate level. So I, I don't know if you've seen, um, Rika, any response from the NCAA on this lawsuit yet, have you? No, I haven't. Wow. All right. So, so tell me a little bit about, you know, in some ways, when, when I read the, the stipulations on all of these programs about testosterone levels that need to be tested in three different ways over different time periods in order to allow wow. some of these trans athletes to participate in competition. I mean, I'm wondering if, if some of these programs might not welcome not having to go down that road anymore. It's a very complex uh, situation that they got themselves tied up in with all of these different regulations. Regulations. I, I wonder how you think this is going to go over with the universities, whether they're going to fight this hard or whether they might welcome it. Yeah, I don't know personally how it's going to go down, but I hope for the best that each university will have the opportunity to use their resources and everything to go down this path and help future athletes to have an equal opportunity when it comes to racing against somebody who's a biological male in the female sport. You know, it's interesting when you look at um, the transcript of the conversation that Charlie Baker, the head of the NCAA had. And this is obviously before Biden rewrote it with Senator Mike Lee, uh, Lee asked him, has the NCAA assessed the physical, emotional, psychological harm of its transgender inclusion policy on female athletes? And what mm. are the findings? If not, why not? And Baker responded that they hadn't conducted any research related to wow. their current policy in wow. that regard. Riley, what do you think about that? Wow. 
<laughs> well, I'm not surprised. That's yeah. wild. Um, this is the same approach that former President Mark Emmert had, now, of course, Charlie Baker. Um, what we've seen across the board as it pertains to the NCAA is it's full of cowards, uh, spineless, morally bankrupt cowards at that. Ooh. Uh, so, look, we're hoping they do the right thing. Honestly, I believe that people within the NCAA are hoping that this is a successful lawsuit. Because, honestly, I don't think they want to be troubled with making this decision because it puts them, it puts mm. Charlie Baker in a difficult position. Um, same thing, these states that are implementing, you know, statutes that prevent males from competing in women's sports at the state level. I believe that the NCAA wants these states to get this legislation through. So it takes it off their plate because, again, they want to avoid accountability and responsibility at all costs. Yeah. Um, Rekha, your, your final thought on that. Um, do you think that this is something that's going to be successful? I really do believe that it's going to be successful. We have a really great group of women standing up and speaking for others. And, you know, we give the opportunity to people to support us. They can visit this website called takeondance.com and they can get all the updates on the case going forward. All right, Rika George, thank you very much, Riley Gaines. Thank you. Uh, you deserve. Y'all let me know in the comments, how did this turn out? How did this lawsuit turn out? a lot of credit both of you for pushing this forward and we'll be watching where it goes thank you very much ladies well folks the patriarchy strikes again the biden administration moves to essentially erase title nine in favor of trans athletes because essentially they are saying that males have a right to compete in female sports which the entire point of Title IX originally That's was wild. to give female athletes the same opportunity for scholarship and advancement. Seriously, these aren't progressives. These are regressives. Name any policy that the left and progressives are not regressing on and moving back to the days of old. I challenge you. Do that in the comments. Go now. This girl comes up next to me. She, her name is Reka. She swam for Virginia Tech. She was from Hungary. And she stayed in the U.S. I asked her, I was like, why, why did you take your fifth year? And she said, I, I've wanted to become an All-American. And so she was standing next to me. She was out of breath. Um, her heart rate was high. And she was watching the result board to see if she made top 16. And she realizes as the last heat dives in the water, which this is the heat that Leah is swimming in in the morning, she realizes she's going to be right on the cusp of making it back. She watches Leah dominates, beats everyone in the water by seconds, which in swimming, even one second is a ton. Um, but Leah beat everyone in the water by multiple seconds, body mm. lengths. And these are Olympians. These are wow. the most impressive female swimmers of all time. Wow. Um, but again, beats everyone. Reka looks up to the result board and she William. realized she placed 17th. And I... Hold on, hold on, man. William ranked 462 in men swimming. He went and became Leah in rank number one? Knew her relatively. I, I didn't know her well, but I knew her name. And we're standing next to each other, and she grabs me, grabs my hand, looks at me with tears coming down her face. And this is when my feelings shifted, because up until this point, I felt kind of mad, just confused. I, I felt mad that the NCAA frustrated. They didn't see it how I saw it. But she grabbed my hand, tears rolling down her face, and she says, I just got beat by someone who didn't even have to try. And that's when my feelings shifted to heartbreak. Seeing how this affected her, knowing she put in the, the same work to a level that I did, um, knowing she stayed an extra year from her home country in Hungary mm. in the States so she could achieve this goal, and she just had that stripped from her. Um, and again, that's when it felt like I'd been punched in the gut. And so we come back that night, and of course, Leah Thomas swims to a national title, beating everyone. That is crazy. That's when Thomas and I race in the 200 freestyle and again resulted in a tie. What was the consequence of tying? We went behind the awards podium where typically you're handed your trophy, you're marched out, you're named an All-American. And so we go back there and the official looks at both Thomas and myself and says, great job, but you guys tied. And we only have one trophy. Therefore, we're giving this trophy to Leah. And I question this, and I say, why? Whoa. And at first, he's, uh, well, we're just doing this in chronological order. To which I further press, and I said, okay, well, what are you being chronological about? 
because we tied. And if we're doing this mm. off alphabetical order, G comes before T. So what are you being chronological about? Mm. To which this wasn't a script they had prepared for him. And he actually appreciated his honesty. He did say, we have to give the trophy for Leah because we Leah has to have it for pictures. They've, they've made that clear. Leah has to have the trophy for pictures. You can pose with this trophy, but you have to give yours back. You have to go home empty handed. Leah Thomas takes the trophy home. End of story. Whoa. There have been 19,000 complaints of discrimination filed with the Department of Education this year. This article talks about the rise in all the complaints and just the wide range of complaints that people are filing. They range from complaints about people using the N-word, people uh, being anti-Semitic and praising Hitler, people mocking the death of George Floyd, uh, and dis disabled students <clears throat> being subjected to discrimination. So um, it's really sad and really disturbing to hear this. And you know, the part that really disturbs me is that you know these young children going into elementary school, middle school, high school, saying these things, they're getting it from home. They're being told mm -hmm. in their households that this is acceptable language, that is acceptable to treat other people differently. So if you are a parent and your child is being subjected to discrimination, what can you do? Well, this article talks about the fact that you can file a complaint with the Department of Education. Any school that receives financial assistance from the federal government is not allowed to discriminate against individuals. So Title VI of uh, the civil rights laws prevent schools uh, from discriminating. So you can file a complaint with the Department of Education. You can also consult with an attorney um, to see if you can get help. There are lots of attorneys who specialize in education law and enforcing Title IX. Uh, mm. Title IX is also a law which protects um, uh, students from sex discrimination in schools. Ooh. So if you are um, in a situation where your child this is being subjected is to discrimination, don't give up, you know, uh, complain, complain loudly, complain loudly to the Department of Education, to your school board members, um, and, ju and just know that, you know, hopefully you can find some rec recourse through some of those um, um, uh, departments. I don't make money from China. You do. I don't make money from Ukraine. You do. I don't make money from Russia. You made three and a half million dollars, Joe. And your son gave you. They even have a statement that we have to give 10% to the big man. You're the big man, I think. I don't know. Maybe you're not. But you're the big man, I think. Your son said we have to give 10% to the big man. Joe, what's that all about? It's terrible. Joe looking like. Joe Biden or Donald Trump? Joe Biden. Why? <laughs> because Donald Trump is an asshole. <laughs> Joe Biden, 100%. I mean, if I had to choose somebody, yeah. I would probably choose someone more left than Joe Biden. But I yeah. felt like Joe Biden was running on a campaign that was based on a lot more human kindness and a lot less prejudice. And <laughs> I think living under Donald Trump as president for four years was very difficult. And we, there's so many reasons that I could get into on why he is terrible, but I think just a general drive for wealth and on prejudice is really awful. This is gonna be interesting this year. Trump says there's two N words that you can't say. You have two N words. Neither of which should ever be mentioned. You know what the one is, but the other is the nuclear word. Not supposed to ever be mentioned. Tyler, what do you think about that as a man of color when Trump says there's man two N words? Color. One of them's nuke, and then the other one, he's like, you know what it is. Okay, a man of color just said it's true. He's literally just spitting a fact. It is a fact. A man of color. This is going to be interesting this year here, boy. But you know, some conspiracy theories think we ain't even going to have an election this year.
boy, he look like he a little old. A little stiff in the bones. What do you like better as a nickname, Slow Joe or Sleepy Joe? So let's go. Wait, Slow Joe first. Okay? So just scream if you like it. So you have a choice. Slow Joe, they're both very appropriate. Slow wow. Joe or Sleepy Joe. Ready? Slow Joe. Wow. I think we're going to have a winner. Sleepy Joe. Okay. He's a sleepy guy. Donald Trump is a savage, though. Who will you be voting for in the election? Uh, Joe Biden, of course, you know. Yeah. What makes you want to vote for Joe Biden? Because of what he's done. What has he done for America? Oh, come on. He's, he's, he, he saved the country from the economic mess that uh, Trump left. Uh, with. <laughs> and so four more years with Joe Biden would help the country get back into a better place? I think so. You know, otherwise, four more years of Donald Trump, no. What do you think is going to happen if Donald Trump gets put into office? I, 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 I can't imagine. I don't want to imagine. I'm, I'm actually looking to, to buy something out of the country in case that happens. Really? Yes. What would be your big fear if Donald Trump gets put and elected back into office? Well, my biggest fear is, uh, you know, he'll just uh, end democracy. Really? You think, you think he'd become a dictator in America? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. With Joe Biden, a lot of immigrants have came into America. What do you think about the migrant crisis here in the United States? Well, I think that it is a problem, uh, the migrant crisis. But, uh, you know, the uh, Biden was uh, supporting the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Republicans and the Democrats came up with a plan. And then Trump uh, squashed it, you know, was opposed to it, uh, only for political reasons. So if you're really concerned about the problem, this bipartisan bill was an answer. Why is it not getting pushed through? What do you think? Well, because Trump told his Republicans, you know, his MAGA Republicans, not to uh, uh, pass it. So do you think Trump's part of the problem here of the border crisis? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Donald Trump or Joe Biden? Can't answer. Why is that? I'm on work. You can't tell if me you, your political party? You can't give political statements. Donald Trump or Joe Biden? Joe Biden. Why do you say Joe Biden? Because Joe Biden. Donald Trump or Joe Biden? Biden. You say Biden? Biden. And why is that? Because uh, Trump's a Cheeto head. Name one thing that you don't like about Donald Trump. Um, he's a womanizer and he's a, he's a thief and he's just a bad guy. Name one thing you don't like about Trump. He's orange. Donald Trump or Joe Jeez. Biden? I'm going to go with Donald Trump on this one. Donald Trump or Joe Biden? Joe Biden. F Trump. And why is that, sir? Because he's a racist. Is Donald Trump racist? In a way, I believe he is. Honestly, just because, like, you know, you know it's, just, it's like in a way, but he just tries to be passive aggressive with it. Donald Trump or Joe Biden? Donald Trump. Why? Just because he's way better. Joe Biden sucks at You don't like Joe Biden? No, I don't care for Joe Biden at all. Who needs music when you can have politics? Who knows politics better? than Kanye West. George Bush well. doesn't care about black people. Hey, you know what? And as far as I'm concerned, Trump yeah. for the next election. Fuck. How do you feel about Donald Trump? <sighs> you want the truth? I want nothing but the mm. truth. I don't got a problem with the man. For what? He ain't never did nothing to me. Is Donald Trump racist? Uh, yeah, I ain't gonna say the man's racist. I heard a joke where it was, uh, are all Donald Trump fans racist? He ain't never did nothing wrong to me, man. I can't judge that man on none of his personal beliefs, so I don't know. So you won't get me to say he's an asshole, but uh, he's a good businessman. Do you think Pelosi and Biden get it on in the Oval Office? <laughs> that's a yes. This guy. Yeah, I think that's what that was. No, um, <laughs> that was an unexpected one. Uh, you know, I think they're too old for that. Yeah. You know? Shooting blanks. Shooting, Shooting blanks. blanks. He pushed that button because you know I had to respect the man. He wasn't even in the office 100 days. He did how many? He shot like 100. No, like I don't know how many missiles it was over in uh, Syria and tore their asses up for the shit that he was doing over there. So you know he uh, had some opinions that I backed on that too because that man was with his own people over there. That ain't right. I'm 100 percent a Trump supporter. He's not a great person, but he's a good president. So. You don't think he's uh, racist or, uh, you know, wrong for the things he said, quote-unquote? Well, he's f***ed up and said some sh sh he shouldn't, to be honest, but he's 
he was digging us out of the hole that we were put into so he's a numbers man and he knows what he's doing is joe biden a good president Personally, I don't think so. No, I, I don't like the way that things are going. You know, I, I was definitely voted for Trump. I feel like everyone hates on Trump, and like I feel like he did some good things as a president. You know, I feel like Biden doesn't really make any of his decisions on his own. He kind of has <laughs> people that like tell him what to say and stuff. So I don't really know if I trust him as a president. You think Joe Biden will get reelected? Oh yeah. You like Joe Biden? Yeah. Why? Donald Trump, bro. Some of us are racist, bro. That fool try to build or try to kick all Mexicans out and try to build a wall. You like our president? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, bro. Let's go, Brandon. Yeah, f Joe Biden. That's all I got to say. We need to get his clown ass out of office and bring back Trump. Very mixed responses in that clip. Trump or Biden? Ah. Uh. She looking at him. Oh, well, like, seeing how gas prices are. I'm not gonna go with Trump. Yeah, bro, I just saw seven dollar gas prices. Jesus. Well, I'm also in the military. Oh, okay. And you know, Biden doesn't really like the military. Yeah, fair so, enough. Just for those reasons, she I'm looking not like. to say. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. What about you? Biden. Biden? Yes. Okay. Any reason why? Or? Trump is a piece of shit. Don't get me wrong. Biden is not too great either, but. Okay. Trump just takes it way too fucking far. Yeah, So, I can't. Okay, cool. A divided household. Trump or Biden? Who? Who the fuck is that? Trump or Biden? Who? I can duck the my... You're fired. Okay, yeah. I don't know. What are they? No, for real. Oh, they're running for the... The president is freaking Biden, girl. Well, of just shows that I don't give a shit. That. Trump all the way. Trump all the way. Oh, Trump. Biden. Trump. Um, damn. Probably Biden. Biden? Trump. <laughs> Trump. Biden. Biden. Wow. Trump. 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 I'm not into politics, to be honest. Um. <laughs> uh. Biden. Uh, Trump. Let me get Trump. Let me get Trump. 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 Uh, neither. Ooh, Trump. Um, Trump. Trump or Biden? Yeah, Trump or Biden. Trump. <laughs> Biden. Uh, Biden. Trump. <laughs> uh, Biden. I'm probably gonna go with. Why Actually, he looks so confused? Just say, say a name. Trump. Oh, I'm not voting this year. I don't like either one. Trump. Uh, Trump. Trump. Biden. Trump. Oh, Trump or Biden? Trump. Uh, Trump. A lot of people, like, don't even know where to go. Trump or Biden? Easy choice, Biden. Inflation rate at an all-time low, unemployment at an all-time low, stock market's all-time high, First Step Job Act. He freed Kodak Black, freed ASAP Rocky, freed Lil Wayne, freed Snoop Dogg Homeboy, not to mention, and got a mugshot himself. Uh, but what? I, I think I, I meant to say Trump. I meant to say Trump. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean to say Biden. I meant to be, yeah, I'm voting for Trump, not Biden. That was confusing. Trump or Biden? Trump. 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 Why? Uh, cause Biden doesn't know if he's coming or going. I don't know, it don't matter. Biden's so old, he don't know what he's talking about or done. That's why gas prices are like $4. Yeah, he stole my point. Everything's a daggone expensive. I mean, look at that milk back there. Five, five bucks a gallon for that. You serious? <laughs> Who's got the best boots? This is why I pull all the baddies in. The baddies. So the only thing you can see is my pants down. I'm camo, like you see my head up here. <laughs> He stole my point. It's Texas Tech, quick question. Trump or Biden? Whoa. Neither. Neither. Is it uh, Trump's for black people? Black people don't <laughs> like Trump. They do. Oh, no comment. No, no, literally. <laughs> do I have to answer? No. Jeez. <laughs> wow. Uh, no comment. Biden. Why? I don't know. I don't like mm. Trump. Um, Biden. Damn. Whoa. <laughs> Biden. I don't even know. Just a name. Just a name. 
He's gonna be your president next year, bro. I don't know, bro. Honestly, I don't know. Damn. Trump. Trump. I saw your TikTok yesterday. Uh, Trump. <laughs> uh, it's like Trump. Biden. Um. No, thank you. Uh. No comment. I don't give up on politics. Yeah, I don't. I don't really care much. Oh shoot. Trump. <laughs> Trump. All the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Trump. 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 Uh, neither. Latinos for Trump! Your mom. Whoa. Biden, back in. Uh, neither. <laughs> I'll go with Trump, bro. Oh, I'm Trump. Oh, I like to keep that to myself. Uh, Donald Trump. Dang. Into politics, but I'll say Trump. Oh, um, I, I'm not super political. Just uh, a name. Uh, and neither. Oh. <laughs> Trump or Biden? Trump all the way. Let's go. Biden. Why? It's the lesser of two evils, in my really? opinion. No hablo inglés. <laughs> <laughs> Trump or Biden? No hablo inglés. Trump or Biden? Trump. 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 Biden. Biden. Trump. What? Trump or Biden? Uh, oh, what? Trump? You Trump. <laughs> Trump. Uh, Vivek. I'm sorry? Trump or Biden? Jesus. Mm. Okay. Trump or Biden? Biden. This is gonna be interesting this year, boy. Trump or Biden? Biden. Biden? Why? Because Trump. Why? I'm a Mexican. What does it have to do with not liking Trump? Because I don't want to go over the wall. So are you here legally or illegally? Legally. So then you have nothing to worry about. I just... White people. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. You're a slave? Are you not a slave? How do you feel about this matchup again in 2024? Who could be better on a given day than Biden? What made you stop this man? I ask anyone. Everything he said, I disagree with. I've met him, yes. Is he an uh, egomaniac and a little obnoxious? However, he's very smart. Are you sorry. college educated? I am totally educated. What has Biden done right? The economy is going like this. Unemployment is shrinking. We're all enslaved. You know, mm. you're being taxed up the wazoo. Where is all this money going? I'm not troubled I would, by the corruption charges I, 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 against Trump. The corruption charges all are country, all manufactured to you know? keep him from being president. I know more pedophile? than you know because I have been in the court system, okay, mm. for many years. I'm, I'm a lawyer. I don't mean that it means I know I, more I than have you. no respect for lawyers and judges. But you have respect for I have you. no respect. Ooh, what? Wow. Trump or Biden? Stop it. Neither. Trump or Biden? Neither. They're both too fucking old. Trump or Biden? Neither. Uh, who would you put? To myself, Why you gotta catch Trump up, Bob? Uh, Trump. Trump? <laughs> yes, sir. But he was interviewing him with a ketchup bottle. Did people take this too far? Michelle Obama recently gave a speech not only hinting on becoming the next president, but being the first lady to accomplish it. That a woman can be president of the United States. I want a president with a record of public service. Someone whose life's work shows our children she that we office. don't chase fame and fortune for ourselves. We fight to give everyone a chance to succeed. After this video aired out, people had a lot to say, but before I get into that, according to reports, sometime between March and May, Biden will be stepping out of the election in order to be replaced by Michelle, in which Barack has already started her funding, but the first thing people pointed out was how she was lying on becoming the first woman to be a president due to Obama saying this in the past. Admiral Mullen, Deborah, Michael and I also wanna acknowledge uh, your son Jack who's deployed today now I don't know about this one but then again you guys let me know what you think and if you believe this theory Michelle Obama is the president are you a Trump or Biden supporter Trump you think other people will be able to guess that probably who do you think he supports Trump or Biden say Biden who do you support if you don't mind me asking 22 I probably think Biden. you think people will be able to guess that probably based on this guy's appearance do you think he voted for Trump or Biden Biden? Biden. Biden? Are you guys Trump or Biden supporters? Not really either. <laughs> okay, would you say you're independent then? Yeah. Do you think people would be able to guess that? No. Based on her appearance, do you think she's a Trump supporter, Biden supporter, or independent? Probably independent. What are you? Trump, Biden, or independent? Probably have to say independent. Do you think people would be able to guess that? Uh, yeah. Based on this guy's appearance, do you think he voted for Trump, Biden, or do you think he's independent? Shit, I'm gonna go Trump. 
Can't be fooled by the cover. We have to make sure that Americans can meet their basic needs. People are not acknowledging your rent is due tomorrow. And most people can't afford to put food on their table. Home ownership is non-existent for young people. Houselessness mm. is rising. And even though we pretend that it's not a thing, the fastest population is the elderly losing their homes because of scams that predatory lenders use. Mm. You have not been living your best lives. I know it. The people on the stage know it. And anybody who is in office right now knows it. And you notice they're not trying to change it. I'm not a politician, but I am running for the highest office of the land. And I Wow. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Before I ever started, I was under investigation. I don't mean this, I'm talking about before I even announced I was running for president, I was under investigation by this lunatic. So it's not election interference. I'm so glad that we can make that clear. His words, not mine. Can someone tell me who the f we're voting for in 2024? Because on one end of the spectrum, we have Genocide Joe, who was funneling billions and billions of dollars our dollars to annihilate Palestinians and on the other end we have Trump who is saying that if he's re-elected he is going to ban refugees from Gaza as well as travelers from Muslim countries mm. how the f are these our only options So the last election was defined as a vote against Trump. Nobody really voted for Biden. It wasn't against Trump. This election is going to be against Biden. We are all just desperate for anything. We will vote against Biden. And I think when this election goes south, which it will, um, this is DNC's fault. Like DNC as an agency has seems to have no foresight. Like, how are you running the most unpopular candidate of all time and you think you have a shot? Like, make it make sense. They will be like, oh, voters, low voter turnout and this and stuff. That's what they're going to say. But reality is, you just have a shitty Canada. That's not you. Okay, so me personally, I always vote local elections. And I think the thing with local elections is even if you have a shitty president, progressive local candidates can still do certain things to protect marginalized communities, right? And when I am voting in elections where I don't like any of the candidates because they're all Zionist or right wingers, I'm putting in the word free Palestine. Shout out to Rosie on TikTok for this idea. But I'm going to put free Palestine because it's like an intentional non-voting as opposed to just not showing up. I'm going to show up and I'm going to tell them. I voted for a free Palestine because it will make it a legitimate voter issue that they then have to make opinions or like a stance on. Here's the deal. There are lifelong Democrat voters who are now saying, that's my final straw. I will not be voting for Joe Biden in 2024 because he's funding a genocide and I can't bring myself to give him a vote. And then mm -hmm. there are other Democrats saying, no, you have to vote for him. He's the lesser of two evils. If he loses, Trump wins, and Trump is way worse, so vote blue no matter who. I'm not telling you who to vote for. I, myself, am very torn because I am seeing the argument on both sides, but we have a year to figure it out. I will say this right now, though. Enough with vote blue no matter who. We have to completely eliminate that phrase from our vocabulary because what does it let the Democratic Party know? Holy shit. We can literally do whatever the fuck we want and they'll vote for us anyway. Mm -hmm. This is great. What are Democrats at the end of the day? They are still capitalist, greedy people who have no problem fucking us over to get what they want. Have they mm. done things to help us in the past? Sure, but they have not done nearly enough. They are not helping us enough. They are still letting us down. We have to scare them. We have to make them terrified. We have to tell the Democratic Party and the people running for office... If you want our votes, you have to do this, this, and this. And if That's you don't do that, we are not voting for you, and you will continue to lose in every election going forward. That's a fact. Make them squirm. Squirm? Okay, you guys, listen. Don't don't fight with me. Don't tussle with me, okay? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to have a conversation, all right? I'm just trying to ask a couple of questions, all right? Um, what are we doing in 2024, okay? Because, listen, it's clearly evident Joe does not have another four years. Joe barely has another four minutes. Let's just let's just be clear. Let's just be clear. Okay, Williamson, old girl, uh, she old didn't girl. secure the nominee last time when she ran. She was talking all types of crazy. Um, I'm going to say his name wrong. Uger. Uger. Um, I've seen his his I've seen things um that he said before, like on Twitter, TikTok, stuff like that for years, because I know he's on that show on YouTube. I believe it's called Young Turks. I actually do like him. And then Phillips, if you don't know Phillips, Phillips actually has a seat or had a seat, uh, but he is walking away from it because he wants to run against Joe because he doesn't feel like Joe is fit to stand for another four years. Now, 
for the Republicans, you guys, listen, um, Vivek wants to raise the voting age of 25. He wants everyone to take a civics test. The only way that you can vote is Whoa. if you pass a civics test. My question is this. Uh, are we still going to be drafting for the army at 18 then? If I can't vote, <laughs> are you still going to draft me at 18? Mm. Um, that's a little crazy. Vivek is also the same person who says that he doesn't believe or support identity politics, yet he took a minority scholarship from a George Soros foundation. Um, yeah, so there's that. As far as Ron DeSantis goes, you guys, listen, I'm in the state of Florida. That man should never be allowed anywhere near the White House. I don't even want him in the governor's mansion, okay? We have no homeowner's insurance in the state of Florida. He's not here. Literally, the Congressional House of Florida wrote him a letter pretty much like, hey, look, it ain't, it ain't falling through what you're doing, so you need to go ahead and bring your ass back home because we got stuff to do. His own party in the state of Florida isn't even supporting him. If wow. you ask the average Republican in the Congressional House in the state of Florida, they all tell you that they're supporting Donald Trump. How embarrassing your own people are like yeah <laughs> we're going with the other guy crazy uh hutchinson binkin Bur burgum i don't know who any of those people are chris christie his only campaign tactic right now is going at donald trump that's gonna get old it's been old uh tim scott no 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 hey uh nikki haley <laughs> trump really i mean everyone wants trump to be honest with you you guys his last hope is nikki haley i'm just being honest i'm just keeping it a bean um, I need to do more research on Cornell West. I don't really know a whole lot about him. I know some things, but I need to do more research on him. And then as far as Kennedy is concerned, you guys, this man has literally said that transgenderism comes from people licking frogs. What? So my question is, what are we doing? I feel like for the umpteenth billion time, we're going to be stuck between a rock and a hard place. What are your thoughts? Be respectful in the comments. We're adults here. Mm-mm-mm. 2024. What's going to happen in this next election? I am terrified about what could possibly happen because our leaders matter. Who we select, who speaks for us, who holds that bully pulpit. It affects us in ways that I, sometimes I think people take for granted. Very stark warning from her about the challenges that Democrats face coming up in November. Uh, yeah, look, she's never been shy about these kinds of things. And it also, uh, don't forget that her husband, Barack Obama, recently met with Joe Biden and gave some advice about what he ought to do with his campaign. That is maybe move some of the people from the White House to the campaign. And so I think, you know, uh, this is a couple that talks to each other. And I think you can presume that they both feel the same way. They're looking at the same polls that we're looking at. They're looking at the fact that he's losing a lot of key constituencies like younger voters uh, and, and Hispanic voters. And so I think she's speaking her truth, as we say, and she's not shy about it. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are not happy with their options for the 2024 presidential election, but that does not make it okay to stand outside my window screaming and begging me and begging me to run for office. No! gonna happen it's just hard because people know that if i was president i would make the big railroad happen because i'd lay the tracks down myself because that's the kind of girl and leader and she president i'd be and i don't know how people found the paper i wrote in high school that perfectly explains how to solve the economy but whoever found that please put that back where you found it because i've changed my priorities in life and i don't want to be president i really want to pursue long-form improv and if people know that i know how to solve the economy they're gonna make me do it but i don't want to spend all my time with fucking losers sorry sorry cat's out of the bag if you are the president you gotta hang out with losers a lot of the time i don't want to hang out with losers i want to hang out with cool friends like my friend ash i'm supposed to learn how to skateboard soon also i'm literally not even old enough to run because i'm the youngest girl alive and i know that eats you haters up and i know you wake up crying in your sleep because you're like god she has everything i don't know what the hell she was talking about Later, but the damage had already been done from that. And you need to find some safe middle ground where people know that the vaccine is safe for you, uh. but you don't. Oh, well, what do you mean? You look, you're fine. You're vaccinated. What do you? Oh, <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> it's your it's your segment. And if Democrats don't get their you know what together, he's certainly going well, to get reelected. Here's my you question know, for you. Here's my question for you because you talk about you, you talk about. I am not. Judge. Nobody no, is. I, no, oh yeah. Did you just point at me? Yeah. Listen, I don't have Trump derangement. Let me tell you what I have. Okay. I have a lot of. I'm tired 
of people starting a conversation with Mexicans or liars and rapists. I'm tired of people starting a conversation about this country. Listen, I'm 62 years old. There have been a lot of people in office that I didn't agree with, but I have never, ever seen anything like this. I've never seen anybody whip up such hate. I've never seen anybody be so dismissive. And I, and clearly you don't watch the show, so you don't know that I don't suffer from that. What I suffer from is the inability to figure out how to fix this. That's my mm. issue. But one of the things that you talk about a lot, and I'm curious about it, is the deep state. How long has the deep state been there and who's running it? Well, the, the, I want to answer your question because you gave you had to ask no, you a question. You had I, your I, opening statement, which was how horrible it is that Donald Trump no, is talking no, no, about that's all what you, of these I'm people. Sorry, you know Betty, what that's I what you said. Horrible. You said, well, but you know you what's said horrible that it, when it people was, who it's shouldn't okay. be here end it's, up murdering the children of American citizens. You know what's hard? What's when, horrible when the president of the United States whips up people to beat the hell out of people. No, say goodbye. She said, "Say goodbye." Kicked her off the show. You this you know a lot of trump supporters do we need to be deprogrammed be careful that's why i come to work every day <laughs> Damn! she said be careful you said well, but you know you said tempers it reached a boiling okay. point we backstage at the view between the whoopi goldberg and tv judge janine pirro she started cursing at me she stopped and put a finger in my face and yelled i've done more for victims than you ever will then I said to her some few choice words I cannot repeat. Both TV personalities spoke about the screaming match today, offering she said, she said versions of what happened. She said, F you, F you. And I said, Whoopi, did you just say F you? I mean, I was, she was right here. And then she said, get the F out of this building. You know, trying to kick Whoa. people off the show and do all these controversial stuff. And the fact that she's only been suspended for two weeks and she's never been fired. Uh, the fact that the show is even still on the air. It's so divisive. It's just, it's just to me a show that really just doesn't, it doesn't try to fill the gap where we can all come together. It's always been and always will be a show where people just, they just don't. You know what I'm saying? They just don't. There's, there's no common ground there. Like people can't go in there with a difference uh, of perspective and get the respect or a good level-headed conversation where they can actually see both sides. Most of the time, they're only seeing their side and they're going to just disman try and dismantle you and whatever belief system you have for that little bit of time mm. that you're going to be on the air. So I hope that the sue, I hope that she does get sued. I hope that, you know, all these things do happen because at the end of the day, we have to also see a balance and that balance, it has to stay. Like, we only see it happening only from the left. I want to see a balance from the right and the left. Like, you out here defaming people's careers and, and defaming people from who they are. Calling someone out of their name. Making them seem like they're a bad person. When in reality, just because you feel the song is a certain, it stands for something else. It doesn't mean that that's what that stands for. It's like everybody just completely ignored the white people in the song you know what i'm saying like oh it, it oh i only see black i only see black people i only think of, wouldn't that be the real controversial issue the fact that you guys only relate this to black people when people do bad things in the song you only relate it to black people that should be the most controversial controversial thing now you know it's crazy when tom Selleck comes out and he's speaking out against whoopi goldberg so at the end of the day like We'll see if the show comes back on, but I highly doubt it, man. I, I do think something's going to happen where the show is eventually going to go off air for real. So we'll see what happens, ladies and gentlemen. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about Tom Selleck, man. Um, I've never, you know, like I said, I'm not going to say I've never been a fan of Tom Selleck, but I've never truly, like, watched or heard him speak before. I didn't even know he was conservative. I had no idea he was a conservative and, and he was an OG. But you know it's real when he comes out and he's in defense of Jason Aldean. That's how you know it's real. So I'll see you guys on the next one, man. Comment down below. Let me know some videos also that you want me to see. You can DM me them. You can Gmail me them. And this video is also from coming in from uh, just in the uh, YouTube channel. So here we go. See you guys on the next one.
all right that was another tiktok video man hey like i said that one right there it was a lot of stuff in there it's a lot of po political things going on especially in 2024 i need to see y'all comments what are y'all thinking about the election what are y'all thinking about title nine what are y'all thinking about all this stuff man and like i said as well if you into this stuff i got a whole playlist of tiktok where you can go there and watch it all type of conspiracy theories political issues food things all type of different stuff entertainment illuminati all that type of stuff is in there but if you made it to the end of this one you a real one for real you a real one for real drop that in the comments man but hey till next time self-love and positivity fire squad i got you when you know it hey cool.